welcome back to the channel. I need to probably um, lower this a little bit, this music. But, oh yeah, why did I play a Carol Con? Not all physics is back and better than before, so he just matched me because he got close to 1300 on chest tempo. He wanted to test out his newfound tactical powers, so we're gonna we're gonna play him. Um, and I decided to record a video because I'm out of content. So this, I don't really know anything about the Carol Con. I used to play it a lot, and I don't remember what I do, to be honest. Like maybe I do this, and then if they take, I go here. I do remember some ideas where I go like H5, and then... Why do we go H5? I, I don't know. And now that they've traded, do I still go H5 at all? In, in any case, in this kind of structure, I do know c5 is pretty important at some point. You can even play like queen b6 and stuff and get pressure on this pawn. They move this bishop, queen b6, attacks that, and attacks that. They still have two defenders of this. We would have two attackers. Um, we'll, we'll just go here, I guess. It doesn't hurt. They might end up moving the bishop and letting us get that for free. But overall, I'm just trying to probably pick, play the bishop here, maybe knight here, and then castle. I don't know if queenside castling is ever a thing. Um, I, I would imagine I'm playing this, and sometimes f6 is the other pawn break, so usually like pawn breaks, you just attack the pawn, like you create that tension, and if they take, it's usually good for you, you get to develop, and you have more space. Oh, that's two pawns in the center versus their one. Um, in this case, this weakens the structure a little bit more, but it also could eventually get me a good center. I feel like less confident about this move than this move. I don't really know exactly when I'm supposed to play this, to be honest. And I feel like a lot of people, they do a lot of opening work, and even if you do make the right decisions a lot of times, against like a much stronger player, it's not going to matter if you are doing really good in the opening or not. Even if you're up a pawn out of the opening, it just doesn't matter. Um, okay, question is, we do have this pawn now, so that was a failed blunder check, unless they have a poison pawn, like going here would end up messing us up. The thing is, I don't worry about it because if they did something like this, I could just take this with check and then later on protect this maybe. But you have to look at this, this, take, if they move the bishop back, now they're hitting the queen and they still might be taking this pawn, does that really matter? Um, probably not because we'd be up a knight, so as long as the queen can become safe, I don't really see any reason to worry about taking this pawn. Now they could move something like knight here, attack the queen, um, but then I give a check, and then win the knight. So it looks like I'm winning so far. And like, okay, they made a high record on tactics, but the thing that tactics trains you on is seeing your own tactics and not really preventing your own tactics from preventing attacks from the opponent. So like if you change the board to this, this side, Okay, I actually already moved. Um, okay, I'll just take. And it should be fine. But. Okay, so you want to move this bishop. Okay, I'm moving pretty fast. I'll just lose some time to try to be instructive. So they want to move this bishop. And whenever they move it, they have to envision. Okay, you want to move it to f4. What checks, captures, and threats does the opponent have after you make this move? This is a rapid game, so you definitely have time to do that. Um, you have to see that you lose protection of this pawn, and the queen will be able to take. So that kind of thing is why most people are stuck at lower ratings, because they fail to do this. And this one is like a visualization thing, maybe, because when the bishop moves, 
it's like you're trying to do a blunder check, you might think this pawn is still protected. And that's called a um, retain image error. If you move your bishop and then while looking for your opponent's tactics, you see the queen can take on b2, but you think, oh wait, the bishop's covering it. Not realizing that you already moved the bishop, so it's not covering it. That makes sense. Okay, let's see, what, what's going on? We, we're up a knight, they castled. Um, can we do this? We can take with the knight? Or is this getting too fancy? We have two pieces attacking, because now the good thing about the bishop here is they cut off their coordination this way, so I could maybe take. This would be bad if the bishop could move here or something and give a check, because then they would win our queen. But right now our king is on a light square and their bishop is on a dark square. If they move this, we could just trade. I don't really see a downside of this right now. Okay, they do that. We go here. We also have to look at stuff like this at times, but um, we could just take, and then they would have to take, and then we would take the bishop, so they actually have no tricks. And we're also attacking this pawn, and they couldn't even do this because they'd be pinned. Now, we could take the pawn, we could also trade queens. The correct thing to do in this situation, I believe, is to trade queens because we're up plus 5 already. So we don't have to be greedy with getting um, material. Now, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna explain what I'm about to do because he might move pretty fast. I'm moving knight d7 to attack the pawn. Um, and then maybe the natural move he might do is f4. You could also defend with the bishop. But after that, I want to move the bishop here because I want to trade pieces. Went up material, look for ways to trade pieces. And this is a straightforward way, like you create a threat. And one of the most common ways to defend the threat will let me force a trade because their bishop will be pinned to the king. So even if they don't want to trade bishops, it would create a case. So they did play a decent move. They um, went here to protect it. So now this idea doesn't really work. I could go here though and then force the bishop away and then take. So that's what I'm gonna do. And we don't have to worry about moving pawns in front of the side where we're castling because um, the queen's off the board. It doesn't really, we're not weakening too much at this point. Okay, so now we get this. Um, we do have to be careful because they could do. So I'm doing a blunder check. I go here, they go here. If I move the knight, I lose the rook. So when they go here and there, I have to be prepared to play something like this or move the bishop to defend. And I also have to look at this because if I take and take, then whatever piece is on e5 is pinned again still. I could give this check, but then they move and attack my thing and this is still attacked. Um, so I don't even know if it's worth taking this pawn. It might still work out tactically, but I'm kind of scared about about it, so I'm just going to move the rook here to defend the pawn, and now if the bishop moves, at least the rook is also defending the pawn, and I'm still hitting this pawn. Now they could go here, and then if I take, uh, I don't know, I'm not really sure. Now I'll just castle this way, why not? Alright, and these pawn pushes that they're doing doesn't really do anything. Um, like nothing any of us are doing really does anything. So we're up plus five, so unless like I blunder, you know, there's not, not much that can be done. And I don't really have to play in any particular kind of way, I just have to not give up the material advantage basically. So if you look through an engine at this point, um, a lot of the moves might not be the best move. I mean, that could be said at any point in the game, but um, but there are cases where I'll just play pretty fast, where I know I'm not losing material, even though there are much stronger alternatives, probably, I think. But you don't really need to think at this point. Um, at least when you're 
when you're at like this kind of rating disadvantage. Like advantage, I should say. Because if you go to a tournament and you're up material, you could easily find a way to not actually win or just draw the game because people are really good at defending. So now we wait. Also, I have three minutes left, so... And there's not much to say about some of the rest of these things. Like, it's possible they fall into another tactic at some point. Like, maybe I go here. Well, now I won't be able to fork them exactly. But, um... Does this make sense at all? I don't know. I'll go here, though. You're like setting up a kingside attack with no queen. Uh, but it eventually forces some stuff off the board. Okay, or I can do that. I wonder. Okay, I'm gonna go here because. This is like a good outpost work for the knight. Not technically because they can they can kick the knight, but I feel like that's gotta be good for me somehow. And if they were to take, I would be winning some material, so this is a knight that's hard for them to really displace, they would have to do this. And actually if they did that, I would have this wing the um thing, so that's actually pretty neat. I almost took, and then they would have had that. I will... Actually don't know what to do. I just go here. Because we don't have to let them do this, they might not even do it. We attack the, the rook, and then, depending on where I move, I might just take this, and then win that. Yeah, they can't even defend it with this because I can just take. And if they move all the way back, I get this, and win the exchange. So even without them moving this, bishop c5 is still like a decent move. So it is 100% over. And I mean, yeah, 1300 chest tempo is definitely really good, like it, it definitely shocked me to see that. Um, he got there that quickly, but um, he has been training a lot, so if we look at the... They actually have a new stats page that I'll eventually look at, but he has been doing a lot of work, which is nice to see. His solve time, like I said, it should be at least a minute per puzzle. There's puzzles he got wrong that's under a minute, so that's still something I don't like to see, but we do see more like 3 minutes, 2 minutes, like he is taking this a lot more seriously than he was before. Okay, 16, but getting it right, I still don't like it, I, I, don't, I don't really know what to say. Because maybe it's okay, but then 20, 16 seconds of getting it wrong, 22 seconds of getting it wrong, it's my turn, I'm about to flag, but... I'll just, I'm not gonna pick up. But yeah, he should be taking more time, still. So he would have even more reigning gain if he did that. Okay, now we can do this because um, this isn't hanging anymore. If they take, I could even take with the rook and then the knight's still guarding this pawn. So just centralized knights, really good. Um, they're attacking this. I can do this, I guess, and defend. I don't know, there's like a saying you want to put your pawns on the square opposite of their bishop. And most of my pawns are on light squares. Yeah. So, and then the one that is on dark square, it's defended enough times. Um, what happens if we go here? I don't really see a plan because rook d2 doesn't really do anything but 
Okay, this is the only open file and I have double rooks on it, so that's pretty good. They have a rook on a semi-open file, since they don't have any pawns here, but I do, so that's still decent. Okay, now... I'm gonna play pretty quickly, because I hope that they take, so I can checkmate. Alright. So that's a tip. If you see a thing where they could go wrong, I just kind of end up playing quickly. Okay. Wait, I want to do the game review. Just look at the look at the stuff. Okay, ninety one point nine. Wow. Um. So yeah, this was not a good move. They went from 0.47 to negative 1.15 after doing this. And it's like, I just don't give up the advantage after that. So, overall, just moving that bishop and losing that pawn was the most important mistake in a game, probably. I mean, I always just treat the first tactical miss as the most important thing because it just usually all goes downhill from there. It's harder to really do stuff when, um, I don't know, when you first weaken your position, like in, in any case, like even if it's not tactical, if you're just really in a really passive position, it's going to be easier to make a tactical mistake. And if you have fewer pieces, it's going to be easier to make a tactical mistake because you have less pieces that can defend. So. Oh yeah, and then he did end up falling in for this um, checkmate pattern. Alright, that's that's it. Gonna be uploading it. At some point I will look through some chess tempo stuff, but I guess this kind of counts as like a lesson in a way. Just gotta do the blunder check. Alright, see ya.